Hello everyone, my name is Josh from Drastic, and today I am watching a Mr. Balden video. Today's video was a suggestion video, uh, and the suggested video is called Three Scary Sounds That Will Give You Nightmares. I'm pretty sure that's what the person was talking about. Uh, if not, I'm sorry, but this is what I saw. This was the most recent thing I saw about him uh, doing a video on Three Scary Sounds, so... We're going to be watching this one. If I get it wrong, just let me know in the, down in the comments below. But anyways, so I'm sorry I'm very late, but I have been trying all day to figure out how to uh, record on Windows. Because uh, I have Windows on my MacBook. Yeah, I know, it's kind of weird. But I've been trying to record on Windows because I want to record video games. And Windows has way more video games than Mac. But, problem is... It is a pain. There's so many issues with it. I don't know how to work Windows as well as I know how to work Mac. Mac is just so simple compared to Windows, honestly. And, oh my gosh, I enjoy Mac way better. It's way easier to record via Mac. And then Windows has problems and it doesn't even tell you how to fix it. I mean, it tells you how to fix it, but I mean, like, barely. How am I supposed to know where to navigate to just to fix the audio of my headphones that keeps on? Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes I have to unplug it and then replug it back in, and it works for some reason. Doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, I'm just having so much trouble with doing that, and now it's 5 o'clock. I haven't eaten all day. I did two TikToks today because I saw some stupid ads and I wanted to talk about them. And so I have literally done nothing today besides trying to fix my Windows. God did. Besides trying to fix my Windows. That's it. That's all I've been trying to do. So, sorry. Hopefully this video makes up for it. Yes, I saw Nuke uploaded a video, but this was a suggestion, so I'm going to watch this first, and then next time I will watch Nuke. So without further ado, let's get right into the video because I'm sick and tired of everything I've been doing, and I just feel like uploading a video today. So here we go. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully the video sounds great, and yeah, I'm just, let's just do it. One of today's audio clips is used by the United States Navy to simulate torture for Navy SEAL trainees. Mm. But before I get into today's stories, if you're a fan of <coughs> the Strange Dark and the then I still have cold. story format, then you've come to the right channel. because Also, we're at 125 subscribers. Awesome. Five times every week. Nice to see so you. Glad you're please along. Please steal the like button's library card and then check oh. out several hardcover coffee table and of course, and never... And of course, I forgot... Uh, if you guys enjoy this kind of content, leave a like on the video. It's much appreciated. Help me with my all, all my suffering that I'm going through right now. Uh, and if you're new here, hi, I'm Josh, and this is what I do. I react to videos, and I play video games. Well, I'm trying to play video games, but it's really difficult to figure out the settings. Um, and it, So if you enjoy that kind of content, leave a like on the video. It'd be much... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm messing up everything. Uh, consider subscribing and sharing my videos with your friends so that it may grow and we can all watch awesome stuff together. Uh, and if you have any suggestions of literally anything, just go down in the comments below and tell me the title of it. Uh, whether it be free game on Steam or video, just tell me the title of it down in my comments below and I'll, I'll react to it like I am right now. Uh, anyways, let's begin. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Return though. Also, please subscribe to this channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. All right, let's get into today's stories. Like, I just want to complain about it. Like, why aren't the video settings automatically configured to my computer when I immediately boot up Win or OBS? It should just automatically work like it does for Apple. Apple, I have no problems with Apple. Amongst all the special operations units in the entire world, there are a handful of units that are better than everybody else. And one of them is the United States Navy SEALs. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a little bit biased because I was a Navy SEAL from 2012 to 2017. Wait, is but Navy SEAL better than Marine? Speaking, the amount of money that the United States Navy invests into creating one Navy SEAL is approximately $1 million. Now, think about that from a military standpoint. 
the military is like the ultimate bureaucracy, where it's all about kind of mass producing solutions. But with the Navy SEAL teams, it's kind of like the opposite, where this big bureaucracy is spending all this money and time to identify individuals that on their own merits are going to be the solution. And in order to be identified as one of those individuals, you need to go through arguably one of the most difficult military selection programs in the entire world. And if you make it to the very end of the year and a half to two year long process of becoming a Navy SEAL, one of the last things you have to do before you can actually put a trident on your chest and be a Navy SEAL is go through a course called SEER School. SEER stands for Survival, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape. They're gonna teach you how to handle being captured by the enemy and more specifically, being tortured by the enemy. Much of SEER school is done in the classroom, but the famous part of SEER school is done in the field. Now, before I get into anything to do with the field exercise, just know that I can't really talk in detail about it because a lot of it is actually sensitive information. So I'm gonna be speaking in generalities about the course, but you'll get the gist and you will appreciate the audio recording. After you finish the classroom portion of SEER school, you move on to the kind of final training exercise or field exercise. And that's where they simulate you being behind enemy lines and getting captured. And you need to basically show your instructors that you don't just crumble, that you actually can handle the stress and the pressure uh, and the mistreatment. There are segments of the field training exercise where you are put into very stressful positions. Uh, you're sensory deprived and you have to listen to a particular audio recording. It is the Boots Poem by Rudyard Kipling, and anybody that's been through Navy SEER school knows exactly what that poem sounds like, because you listen to it over and over and over and over and over. It is maddening. I mean, maddening. I put it on for this video and listened to it. I had to turn it off. It's seriously awful. And so just imagine listening to this for like, I, mean, I, I don't want to give any. Is time this to real? This extremely long amount. Is of this legit? That you're just listening to this in this tight little space, and you're all cramped up. It's it's awful. It really is. So here you go. Have a listen to the official torture song of the Navy SEAL team. He can't. We have put clog, 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 clogging over Africa. I can barely oh, hear it. Stand fine. I like how I like how this. Company, <laughs> Strings of 40,000 million boots, 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 moving up and down again. There's no discharge in the war. Try, 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 try to think of something different. Oh, my God, keep me from going lunatic. How, how boots, loud is it? Boots, 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 moving up and down again. There's no discharge in the war. Is that is that it? Was that it? It was annoying just in general. I mean, just listening to it once was annoying, but you'd have to listen to it over and over and over again. I mean, after a while, don't you feel like you get used to it? No, because he's like, bleh, bleh, bleh. I just get an, I just get angry. I feel like I just get mad. I wouldn't go mad. I would just get mad. Because I just get mad at the thing. Meh, meh, it's so annoying. I don't know. What's the difference between going mad and just being mad? I don't know. It's a linguistics job to tell me the difference that I don't know. Click, click, click. In 2013, a Reddit user was having a hard time getting to sleep, and then they would wake up in the middle of the night, and their sleep was just generally broken, and so they decided they would look into downloading a sleep app. She wound up settling on a particular app called Sleep as Android, because not only would it give her a whole bunch of information about her night's sleep, but it also had a constant recording going over the course of the night, and any time it picked up an anomaly in sound, like snoring, uh -oh. or talking in your sleep, it would record it and then clip it and provide it to you the next morning and show you these highlights cool. of your sleeping from the night before. So she downloads the app and starting on October 1st, 2013, she begins dutifully turning this thing on before she goes to bed. And then the next day she would get up, she'd review her sleep, she'd read all the graphs, she'd get all the reports. 
But the thing she wound up being the most interested in was this little timeline of all these instances where she would snore or make a funny sound. And it was just interesting because you don't get to listen to yourself sleep because, well, you're sleeping. You're sleeping. But starting in November, so a month after downloading it, she started noticing that the app was picking up this strange clicking sound. It didn't have a consistent cadence to it. It almost sounded like someone had dropped something on the ground, but it was really difficult to discern it as something specific in the room. And so she assumed it had to be like the string on the fan because some nights her fan was on, some nights it was off. And when it was swinging, maybe it was rattling the fan and the chain was bumping into the side of the frame, or it was just something else in a room. That's probably it what it was. strike her as a very meaningful sound, but she was at least starting to be aware of this sound. Over the next couple of weeks, she heard the sound a couple more times, not while she was sleeping, just the next morning when she would see it on her app. And she actually started trying to recreate the sound by turning on the fan and actually shaking the fan to try to get the string well, to that's... bounce up against the side in hopes that that would be the sound. But despite listening really intently for the sound, she just could not duplicate it and just didn't know where it was coming from. But again, she's not concerned, she's just a little bit perplexed. Then on December 30th, 2013, so this is about three months after downloading it, She's had about a month and a half of hearing these clicking sounds. She wakes up and she sees on her app's timeline, there's a whole bunch of audio recordings, but there's one particularly loud recording that took place at 2.04 a.m. earlier that morning. She loads it up and she starts hearing those clicking sounds that she had grown accustomed to hearing, but then she hears herself sit up in the bed and say, what are you doing? And then there's a pause. And then a male voice says back to her, nothing. And then you hear some more clicking and you hear that same voice say, that's them. And so right after hearing this recording, the Reddit user is like, oh my God, was someone in my house? And she runs around the house, makes sure nobody else is there. All the doors are locked, all the windows are locked. There's no sign that anybody was in the house. Nothing's missing, at least nothing she can tell. The Reddit user's friend suggested, why don't you post it to Reddit? and see if anybody can give you some insight into what this was. Out of the thousands of comments on there that were all over the map for what this could be, there was a speech expert that actually got in touch with the Reddit user and went through the audio with her and then had her send recordings to him as well as her son to try to see if it would be possible for her to make the voice. And the speech expert determined that it would be impossible for her or her son to have made the voice in the room, meaning someone else was in the room with her in the middle of the night. After this particular night, she never picked up another voice in her room with her. I wonder she why. She to hear that clicking sound that she began to associate with whoever this person was that was in the room with her. And so she and her son ultimately moved. Here is the audio recording. Is that it? Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. This person was that was in the room with her. And so whoa, she whoa, her whoa, 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 whoa. It wasn't deep recording. and dark like I thought it was. It was just... She sits up. She's sitting up. In the late 1940s... I don't know what to say to that. Now I want to download the app. Just because I know I say stupid stuff at night. I bet you I say some stupid stuff at night. I'm going to go download a sleep app and see if I can say some stupid stuff at night. <clears throat> That's weird. That's weird. He's in 1950s. Reverend Jim Jones was known for his charitable works and his efforts towards desegregating Indiana. 
This earned him a devoted, loyal following, in particular from the African-American community. In 1956, he purchased a church in Indiana, and he named it the People's Temple, and all of his loyal followers went there and joined his congregation. During his fiery sermons, Jones emphasized helping the poor and lifting up the downtrodden, but despite his best efforts, raising money was proving to be a big challenge for him. Jones knew he was an amazing performer and he was really good on stage, and so instead of trying to do all the old school church fundraising techniques, he decided to do something a little more new school that played to his strengths, which was performance. And so what he started doing is advertising that he could perform miracles, live miracles on stage. And specifically what he said he could do is he could pull cancer out of people. And he had this magic trick where he would go up to somebody that had cancer and he would appear to be pulling on them. And then he would pull out what looked like meat from this person. And it was meat, it was chicken meat. And he made it seem like he had removed the cancer and people loved it. And his congregation swelled immediately oh. and money was pouring in. And it was around this time that Jones began to realize the power of his own influence. He could make his followers believe anything he wanted. No. This power trip, though, over time would cause Jones to lose his grip on reality. And so when he began espousing fairly radical views, he didn't have anybody that was going to stand up and say, mm, I don't know if you're right about that. Instead, he had a mass of people that basically blindly agreed with him. But when his social goals became so radical that they attracted Marxist leaders and violent leftist groups to the People's Temple, it was the one time that his followers said, okay, enough is enough. And there was a mass defection out of the People's Temple. And some of these defectors, when they left and had a chance to kind of look at the People's Temple for what it was, they realized it was more like a cult and that they had been brainwashed and that Jim Jones was a lunatic and anybody who followed him could potentially be in danger. And so they went to the media and told them about this. The media converges on the People's Temple and all of a sudden it's this huge scandal that Jim Jones is the leader of a cult. And as stories started to break about Jim Jones being this awful person who was stealing from his members and abusing them and brainwashing them, he up and leaves for South America with hundreds of his most loyal followers. And they resettle in an area called Guyana that would eventually be called Jonestown. Life on the Jonestown compound was very grim. Not only did they have 10 hour workdays every day of the week, but food and water were extremely limited because they were so cut off from modern society that the only way they could get any sort of resources was through haggling over a shortwave radio that usually didn't even work. So they're totally cut off, they have very few supplies. And then at the end of their 10 hour workday, it was mandatory for all members to come into this main area underneath this big scaffolding where Jim Jones would get up on stage and he would rant and rave about various government conspiracies that were going to befall them. He would excoriate defectors and talk about how they needed to round them up and make examples of them. And if you stepped out of line, even just a little bit, you could find yourself locked inside of a coffin or trapped at the bottom of a well as a form of punishment. Jones was already spiraling out of control, but some health issues led him to take a daily near lethal dose of amphetamines and sedatives that made him a total lunatic. Suddenly his nighttime speeches just weren't enough and he began pumping these crazy speeches 24 seven over loudspeakers all over the camp. One defector said the speeches were centered on this idea that back in the United States, the government was systematically rounding up African Americans and sending them to concentration camps. And it was only a matter of time before they came here and took any of the African Americans here into captivity. And since the majority of the People's Temple were of African American descent, this was terrifying. U.S. Congressman Leo Ryan had been keeping close tabs on the People's Temple ever since the news broke about Jim Jones kind of being a hack and a maniac. And when they went to South America, he just felt like no one's really checking in on them and I'm concerned for the well-being of the people that are there. And so on November 18th, 1978, Ryan, along with 18 other people, flew to Guyana to talk to Jim Jones and to make sure that everything was okay. When he arrived, he was expecting it to be kind of in disrepair and be this chaotic scene, but it wasn't. The camp was maintained, people were well-dressed, polite. It seemed like a happy and healthy community with a few hundred people there. And he actually went to Jim Jones and says, you know, it, it looks like you got a good thing going here. But Jones, in his totally delusional state, believed Ryan was being sent by the US government to round up the members and to ship them into concentration camps. 
And so as soon as the congressman left the camp and was headed back to the airport, Jones sent a security team after them and they shot and killed Leo Ryan along with four others. While that massacre is going on, Jones goes over to the middle of the camp where he normally gives his nighttime speeches and he calls all 900 plus members to the middle of camp to listen to him. He turns on a recording device, he picks up his microphone, and he delivers a speech that would come to be known as the death tape. His mm. famous first line of this speech is, I've tried my best to give you a good life. And you can hear the crowd erupt with cheers as he says this, and what listeners of this tape can't see is what's being unveiled at the same time, right next to Jim Jones, is this silver cauldron of this sickly purple liquid, and next to it are about 900 cups. The next day, authorities are outside the gate of Jonestown, and they're getting ready to head into Jonestown to confront Jim Jones about his connection to the murder of Congressman Ryan and the four others. And they're loading their guns, they're getting ready for what's bound to be massive resistance from this crazy cult leader and his followers. And as they're making their way down the road and the camp comes into view, they notice that it's eerily quiet and they don't see anybody moving around. And as they're walking through some of the high grass, someone trips and falls and they think they've stepped on a log. But when they stand up and look down, they notice that it's a dead person and they scream out and then everyone's looking around and they notice that all over the ground in front of them are hundreds and hundreds of dead bodies. There's more bodies than they can possibly count. The previous night, that purple liquid that was revealed to the crowd after Jim Jones begins his speech was Kool-Aid mixed with cyanide. And over the course of several hours, and it's all recorded on the death tape, he encourages his members to come up and die with dignity and drink the Kool-Aid. However, if you didn't drink the Kool-Aid or didn't want to drink the Kool-Aid, like many of the 300 children, their parents would make them or the armed guards would come over and they would inject them with it. And after everybody's died, Jim Jones doesn't even drink from the Kool-Aid. He ends up shooting himself. I've decided to only include a very small portion of the death tape because so much of it is just, it's heartbreaking, it's distressing, and it should be something that you decide you want to listen to. It should not be thrust thrust. Come look at this! I hate ads. <clears throat> upon you. How very much I've tried my best to give you a good life. <laughs> it was said by the greatest of prophets from time immemorial. No man lay takes my life from me. I lay my life down. If we can't live in peace, then let's die in peace. We've been so betrayed. We have been so terribly betrayed. Take the portion like they used to take in ancient Greece and step over quietly because we are not committing suicide. It's a revolutionary act. We can't go back. They won't leave us alone. They're now going back to tell more lies, which means more congressmen. And there's no way, no way we can survive. So that's going to do it, guys. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these three stories, and I will pin the best comment at the top of the comments section. If you enjoyed today's... I have nothing to say besides... That was stupid... Uh, stay strong everyone, stay safe, wear your seatbelt, wear your mask, don't point the flashlight behind you, don't look into haunted mirrors, and, uh, just don't join a cult. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As always, have a nice day.